Here is the 2025 Honda Civic Hybrid Sport in solar silver metallic over black. This is all new this year. We finally get a hybrid variant for the Civic because we did lose the Insight, which was an awesome vehicle for practicality and it was basically the same vehicle, just a hybrid. We also dropped the 1.5 liter turbo for the non-hybrids getting the 2.0 liter engine. That's gonna bump to 150 horsepower. This has 200. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and I'm gonna go over some pros and cons. The problem that I have with the new Civic Hybrid and the comparable rivals. In the front, we did get revised LED headlights at daytime runnings. It configures into the honeycomb grille. The Honda badge comes out because the sedan and the hatch is going to have a little bit of a difference in the front fascia. The logo is going to be pushed back a little bit, whereas this is going to be more in your face. The lower bumper has been tweaked with the air vents on the side, so this is going to look a lot more aggressive than Toyota because let's face it, every single Toyota has the crown image. But the pricing to this is at a Toyota Camry SE. So that's gonna definitely be a con to me. And as for a Hyundai, that's going to be the least in class in pricing, but this is going to outperform both Toyota and Hyundai on its trim, but it's going to lack when it goes into the Sonata. We have a 2.0 liter inline four cylinder. That's giving us a combined of 200 horsepower with the two electric motors. That's similar to the CRV. The only major difference that you have here is you cannot option an all wheel drive. It's going to achieve 50 MPGs for the city, 47 MPGs for the highway, 49 combined. And that's gonna be whether you pick the Sport or the Sport Touring. 18 inch wheels, that's the biggest wheel you can get. When you go to the non-hybrids, it's a 16 inch wheel. Gloss black starts on the Sport trim, carrying into the hybrid. And the Sport Touring hybrid gets the 18 inch matte shark gray insert wheels. Gloss black will be on the side view mirror when you go into the Sport non-hybrid and up the tier, the Sport Touring hybrid adds the integrated LED turn signals in the styling for the Civic when they did the redesign, giving that Euro design. I think they did a great job with that. The MPGs is awesome, but the big problem that I'm having is swallowing the price. You're near $29,000 and you have to go up the tier in order to get all features. The nice thing is this is somewhat featured up because you're gonna get more features than the standard sport. But then when I'm considering classes that this is in, it's actually going to compete more so towards the Camry and the Accord in which both of those variants, you can get more features. However, once you start featuring them up, you're gonna be paying at least $10,000, $15,000 more than this. Either way you cut it. And then you're opening up the door to the Accord fully loaded but it's going to be the less performance in class. The best in performance in class will go into the Sonata. This is going to be the best in performance compared to everybody in its class. LED taillights is going to be standard and the exhaust will be exposed on the Sport non-hybrid. The Sport Touring Hybrid will get front and rear parking sensors, but there is no 360 degree reverse camera. Only reverse cameras are optioned on any of these vehicles in their class. Quick release going into 14.8 cubic feet of storage. It's going to be more than Toyota, Hyundai underneath the floor. It's going to get a little bit of storage. You can split fold the rear bench in the back and that'll fold out more or less like a 60-40 split, increasing the cargo to the new Civic Hybrid. Six-way manual seat adjustment for the front. Heated seats are standard for the hybrid trim. Leather seats go into the Sport Touring Hybrid as well as eight-way power seat adjustment and four-way manual seat adjustment. Sport pedals is standard on the hybrid trims. The new hybrid Civic headroom's not an issue, nor is leg space. The Civic dashboard is gonna be the same in all trims. Auto dimming rear view mirror is only on the Sport Touring Hybrid. A moonroof is standard on the hybrid trim, and the Sport Hybrid gets eight speakers with 180 watts, the 12 speakers through Bose with the subwoof, Honda satellite link navigation with voice recognition, and Honda real-time traffic. Wi-Fi hotspot, Sirius XM, HD radio, all of that is only going to be on the Sport Touring Hybrid trim, as well as a nine-inch infotainment screen that's only going to be on the Sport Touring. Apple CarPlay Android Auto is not going to be wireless, and if you want a wireless charger, that's only on the Sport Touring Hybrid. Put it into reverse or reverse camera. The trajectory does expand out, and you can change the layout. 
Unfortunately, they do not offer any 360 degree reverse camera, standard dual climate control settings. And one con I have for me is it's hard to put my sunglasses, I have to literally lay them flat if I was to use this storage bay because it's not really enough from top to bottom. 12 volt charger, two USB ports, and the key fob for the new Civic Hybrid. Leather around the shifter and the steering wheel that's gonna start on the sport trim, non-hybrid going up with the gloss black around it, multi-function, paddle shifts, the gauge cluster is a seven inch TFT display that can go through an array of information for the driver. The 10.2 is only going to be available on the Sport Touring Hybrid trim. Driving modes, you have a total of three, Sport, Normo, and Econ. Working into the aluminum mesh look, honeycomb for all of the air vents, which I do like the design there. It's gonna be soft to touch, opens up into a pretty deep storage pocket. This little bin, you can move it back or forward. Dashboard and door panel configure in together, and it's gonna have more of the everyday materials with the gloss black elements. Software needs to be one touch up and down for the front windows with a medium sized storage pocket and a larger beverage holder carved out. For the back seats headroom and the leg room, no USB ports, no air vents, storage only behind the passenger seat, cup holders with an armrest. Door is going to have the same materials, except you're noticing the gloss black, it's stripped out. You still get some soft materials here with a smaller size storage pocket sliding into the center. The floor is not flat. The rails are not really pushed up enough, but you have enough feet space. Leg, butt, and shoulder space is still pretty good, as well as knee space, and I'm at six foot three. Headroom isn't too bad, but a con for me is we're in the Sport Hybrid trim. I would like to see some charging ports in the back seat. They don't even offer it on the Sport Touring. 200 horsepower Civic, and this is not an SI, so you're getting quite a bit with 232 pound-feet of torque, and you're achieving crazy MPGs, 49 combined, 50 for the city, 47 for the highway. I'm liking what I'm seeing because you have a practical everyday vehicle. You have performance underneath the hood and you're getting more styling in the interior with features added to it. There's only two trims to choose from, but on a con, there isn't a lot of color choices. You only can option this one, the meteorite gray, the crystal black, blue lagoon, and then they have the premium colors like the platinum white pearl and the urban gray pearl. And then they only have two configurations for the color, black and gray, which it depends on the color that you choose for the exterior for the black or the gray. Gonna give her a little go here. Livens up quick. Sound deadening is great. Smooth drive and it's a lot more quiet than the Corolla and the Elantra. That extra power also can get you in and out of traffic a little bit quicker, so whenever you're going up inclines, it's not going to feel like it's lagging anything because it actually has the motivation because the vehicle only weighs 3,208 pounds, which is 273 pounds more than the non-hybrid, but it's about 50 pounds less than the Sport Touring. Another pro to this vehicle is when you're using the key fob to lock or unlock the vehicle, even to auto start it, you could do it well over a hundred in uh, over a hundred feet away. When you own the Toyota, it's more like 30, 40 feet. You're not going to have things like a digital key here, but you can get a lot more technology in the infotainment screen. But then on the con, only the Sport Touring gives us the 9-inch, as well as the 10.2 gauge cluster. With the paddle shifters, for the regenerative braking, you have about four different choices for it to make it stronger or less. This is Sport Mode. And now we have it to the fullest. It's actually doable on a stop and go, and even here. But I would say the happy medium is about two in. Even trying to cancel it though, you still feel a little bit of that regenerative braking. Keeping it in sport mode, it's going to keep the RPM ticked up high, which 
can give you a little bit more of that wow feature because you can hear the exhaust filter in. Acoustic front windscreen is only going to be on the Sport Touring Hybrid, which will make it even more quiet. But as I was stating on the exterior, the big problem is the pricing because now you're at an SE money for a Camry. You can option the Sonata. Obviously, you're not gonna wanna put features to it, but the fact that they're right at that price level, it makes it where it's a tough decision to go into the Civic because traditionally the Civic is usually inexpensive compared to them. But let me know what you think in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise website and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Ocean Honda for giving us this 2025 Honda Civic Hybrid Sport for our car review.